there, Augie Kennedy here. Welcome back to Super Awesome Calculus. Uh, now we're going to take the chapter test for chapter one, which is functions. But before we do that, let's take a look at the big problem from last time. We talked about inverse functions and the question was, the formula C equals 5 ninths F minus 32, where F is greater than or equal to negative 459.67, expresses the Celsius temperature C as a function of the Fahrenheit temperature F. Find a formula for the inverse function and interpret it. What is the domain of the inverse function? Well, let's take a look at it. We've got the formula C equals 5 ninths F minus 32, so long as F is greater than or equal to negative 459.67. Well, now, if you remember the basic idea of an inverse function, we have C equals this with F, Let's find out what F is in terms of C. So what we're going to do, we're going to add 32. So 32 plus, let's get rid of the 5 ninths F by taking the reciprocal, moving it over, 9 fifths C equals F. It's as simple as that. And just so you know, the, um, the domain of this is negative 273, uh, what, 0.85, yeah, 0.85 to infinity. The reason for that is because that's going to be absolute zero, and infinity can go as high as, as, high as need be. Uh, and that's just a restatement of that number up top. And that's how you find the new range, and that's how you interpret it. Uh, the, the interpretation of this is exactly that. It's, the, it's Fahrenheit and given a certain Celsius temperature as opposed to Celsius given a certain Fahrenheit number. Um, and that's, like we said, the domain uh, of the inverse function is this, and it's absolute zero to infinity. Well, um, now, now that we've taken care of the big problem, we're going to go on to the test. So, let me just erase this. Alright, so here's the way that the test works. Basically, I have five problems. And I'm going to give you all five problems. And you can take as long as you need to work on each one. Uh, they're going to be consecutive slides, spaced 10 seconds apart. Just pause it, write down the question, work on it as long as you want. And then once all five have cycled through, I'm going to explain each one, one by one by one. And let's start. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you had fun taking the test. Let's look at the answers. So, question number one. I asked you to draw by hand a rough sketch of the graph of the following functions. The first one was y equals sine x. Well, we actually drew this one a few times. Uh, so, here you go. If you, you probably remember this from your pre-calc days. It's pretty easy. There we go. Negative one. 1, pi over 2, whoops, see, this is why I say rough, because I am not graphically skilled. It can look something like that, if you drew it onward and onward, there you go. Pi, negative pi over 2, that's sine x. As far as negative ln x goes, which was the second part of this question, we drew that last time. y equals ln x. That's pretty simple. Goes up, cuts through, and the place it cuts through is 0, 1, and it's going to continue out that way. Just like the exponential function, except flipped. So that's what ln x looks like. Now we're also going to look at the function 
y equals arctan x. And we also drew that one. If we remember that the tangent function is like that with asymptotes at negative pi over 2, or pi over 4, pi over 2, there we go. If we remember that that's the way that the uh, tangent function, or the tangent function looks like, we can remember that and we can go like this. And there you go. That is what, um, that's basically what arctan looks like. As you can see, there's from negative pi over 2, pi over 2. And here, domain and range are flipped. So, now that we've examined question number one, pat yourselves on the back. If you got that right, go on to the second one. True or false? If f is a function, then f s plus t equals f of s plus f of t. Well, you should know by this point that that statement is false. Do a really, really basic example here. F is a function. Okay, well, let's let F equal X squared. Let's let S equal 2, T equal 3. That's saying that F of 5 should equal F of 2 plus F of 3. Because we have S plus T, 2 plus 3 is 5. Well, 5 squared is 25 equals 4 plus 9. So 25 equals 13. Ah, wrong. It's false. That's just a very important thing to remember. You'd be surprised how, uh, how often it, it looks so easy that you could just combine those numbers inside the function, but you can't. All right. On to the third. Now this question talks a little bit about domain and range. It is, I ask you to find the domain and the range of this function. h of x equals ln x plus 6. Now if you remember what we talked about with uh, the natural log, you remember that it's always positive and that it's like the exponential function. Now you remember the exponential function goes on forever. It has a domain forever, but it's always positive. Uh, its y value is always positive. So it's kind of like that, it's kind of like the, in fact it is the reverse of that with the logarithm. The logarithm, the range goes on forever. In other words, if you look at the, if you look at a graph of the log, it's not that hard to see. This is just ln x. This is the graph of that function. ln x is going to look like that. And it's going to go on. It's going to go up really slowly, but it's going to go up forever, and it's going to go down forever very quickly. So r, even of this function, ln uh, of x plus 6, r is going to be all real numbers. OK? Now you'd also remember about the ln graph that it never crosses into quadrants two or three. It's always going to be positive, like positive x values. So that means that the domain is going to have to be such that negative six to infinity. Because we can't have ln being 0 or less. ln 0 doesn't exist, so we have a closed, or we have an open parenthesis here. If it did exist, it would be a bracket, but it doesn't. So we have the domain is negative 6, which is what it would take to make that 0. If it's negative 5, we have ln 1. That's fine. If it's negative Five and a half, we have ln of 0.5. That's fine too. We can have these things. But 
and it can go on forever and will go on forever. So we take it up to infinity, which always has an open bracket because infinity isn't really a number, it's more like an idea. So we're going up to infinity. So that is the domain and the range of that function. Now, for question number four, I asked you to graph uh, a function using transformations. Now you could have cheated and used a graphing calculator and I wouldn't have blamed you, but you can absolutely do this without using a graphing calculator and if you're taking an AP calculus or freshman college calculus, you're going to need to learn how to do this anyway. So y equals one half one plus e to the x. Well, there's a few ways that I could go about showing this to you, but let's just take it the step-by-step -step way. Here's graph number one. What's the, what's the operative function here? It's e to the x. We know what e to the x looks like. It looks like this. And that little intercept right there is the point 0, 1. By the way, I believe last time I mentioned uh, the logarithm that intercept is not 0, 1, it's 1, 0. Just throwing that out there. Anyway, so here we go. 0, 1 is the point. And we also know that we have a 1 in there. So it's going to be upshifted. So this is going to become plus 1 upshift, and we've got the new intercept being 0, 2. But the actual, we have a scalar before it that's going to take it down by a half. It's going to compress half of that. So now, we've got the function, I'm exaggerating this of course, but the point is back to 0, 1, and it's a little bit flatter than the previous exponential function. And that is basically what the function is going to look like. All right. Now, the last question was kind of a whopper here. That is, the population of a certain species in a limited environment with initial population 100 and carrying capacity 1,000 is P of T equals 100,000 over 100 plus 900 times E to the negative T, where T is measured in years. First, I asked you to graph this function and estimate how long it takes for the population to reach 900. Well. This is kind of not that easy to do, but let's look at it anyway. We know we're dealing with a population. I'm going to sneeze. One second. So, sorry. Uh, I'm tight. Um, we know we're dealing with a population, and populations aren't going to be negative, so let's just focus on this quadrant right here. And we know that the function that we're dealing with is P of T equals 100,000 over 100 plus 900 e to the negative t. Okay? We also know that the carrying capacity is 1,000. That means that it's not going to go over a grand. That's its stable rate. And we know that it's uh, got an initial value of 100. That's the initial population. Now, one good way to uh, go about doing this is to just go ahead and, and solve it. You can use a graphing calculator if you absolutely must, or you could just plug and chug. Plug in some values and see what you get. You ought to get something that looks kind of like this. Something kind of around there. That's pretty good. And, and if you figure out when it's going to reach 900, which is there, or remember, it's got to even out at 1,000. 
How long is it going to take to reach 900? Well, if you, if you plug it in, you'd figure out it's somewhere between four and five. Let's just call it around four and a half. It's going to take about four and a half years to reach 900. If you plugged in t equals four, and then you plugged in t equals five, you'd see that you could split the difference more or less and reach 900. All right, now that's the first part of the equation. The second one is to find the inverse function. Well, if we are looking at p of t equals 100,000 over 100 plus 900e to the negative t, we're going to look for p, okay? Now we have e to the negative t, all right, now that's, that's there, but what we want is we're going to want to be dealing with the new variable p, and we're going to want to use the inverse function of e to the, well, the basic, I mean, we realize it's e to the negative t, but it's going to basically be like ln of negative t. And the way that this is going to come out is we're going to get t equaling an expression of p. And since uh, e to the x was the operative function, or in this case, e to the negative t, we're now going to have negative ln. That's the key. We have negative ln 1,000 minus p over 9p. Now hopefully you got that. And what, I mean, it's, you can get it just by use, carrying through the operations above. And what this really means, what this all comes down to is that it's saying how long it's going to take for a population to reach that number. In other words, instead of realizing uh, the population at a certain time, we're realizing the time to reach a certain population. That's what the inverse is really, is really describing. And using this function, we, uh, we're going to find the time required to reach p equals 900. So just plug in 900, and you're going to get, hopefully, ln 81, which is going to be, and I did use a calculator for this, I'm not some super math know-it-all, but it's going to be 4.4, around 4.4. So I guess 4.5 for where, where it happens, this is 4.4, that's close enough. So, remember, the way that you get here is you just plug in. If it's asking how long it's going to take to reach a population of 900, just plug in 900 into P, because that's the number we're looking for, and you're going to get 100 over that log, log etc. No problem. Um, you can get 1 over 81, negative, use the law of logs, and you're going to get ln 81, and that's going to be 4.4. Alright, well that's chapter 1. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, chapter 2, we're going to be looking at limits, and chapter 2 is called, I believe, Take It to the Limit. That's my name for it. It's really dorky, but... We're going to go over chapter two of the Stewart's book, and I hope you enjoyed uh, today's session, and I look forward to helping you some more. Bye-bye. Take care, y'all.